Views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Do you need assistance in discovering what you truly want in your life? Are you feeling unhappy and stuck and are clueless how to change that heavy feeling? The Laura Longley Show delivers powerful ways to work through common problems and stuck points. This fun and unique weekly show invites some of the most creative and transformative practitioners and authors, hypnotherapists, EFT practitioners, acupuncturists, and astrologers, among others, to activate your wildest dreams. Get ready to tune in to be more of who you truly are. Laura and her guests will take your calls and help you you bring your brilliance to a greater brightness. Get ready to snap to a whole new level in your life with joy leading the way. Say yes to that inspired you and goodbye to your stuckness for good. Now, here is your host, Laura Longley. Good afternoon. I'm Laura Longley and you're listening to the Laura Longley Show on Transformation Talk Radio. Stay with us for the next hour and let us help you to experience ways to get unstuck and live an inspired life full of meaning, purpose and happiness. Each week on the Laura Longley Show, we have some of the most gifted practitioners, speakers, and authors helping you to make authentic and lasting changes in your life. I want to start this show in a little bit different way, although this might be something that starts to become um, a routine for us on the show. And the way I want to start the show today is by doing a really um, brief meditation to send love and healing to everyone impacted by the tornado in Oklahoma yesterday. So wherever you are, unless you're driving, just take a moment to be still, close your eyes, take a deep breath in, and release it, and feel your heart, feel all the love and joy and power in your heart, and now Expand that out and send it with intention to everyone who's had any impact from that tornado yesterday, impacted in any way at all, and send them your love, send them healing energy. And we're just going to sit with that for a moment. And then come back to the room where you are and just take another deep breath in to kind of ground. And thank you so much for participating in that with me. This is how we heal each other and heal the world. So upping our energy just a moment. Well, not just a moment, but for the rest of the show. I want to tell you about what I'm something I'm really excited about, which is that I've created a new Facebook page that is just for the show. Before I had a Facebook page, which was for me and me and me and everything I'm doing, (laughs) but I'm doing a new page that is just for this show. And it's going to be really a fabulous tool for you and a fabulous resource for you. We'll be posting upcoming guests there. We'll be having conversations on the page with guests that are either coming onto the show or have been on the show. And you'll also have access to the recording at the end of the show that is the light bulb moment each week right now you have to listen to the whole show before you get to the light bulb moment and i'm going to be posting on that facebook page just the clip that's the light bulb moment so that you can get your little fix every day um So I would like to invite you to come and like the page and join the the discussion. The name of the page is The Laura Longley Show. So if you go on Facebook and in that little search box at the top, if you just type in The Laura Longley Show, you will find the page. Come and like it and you'll automatically start getting in your feed which guests we're going to be talking with, discussions, and questions for you that will help you to really integrate 
the things that we talk about on the show because we'll get focused on how to start implementing those things in your life using the Facebook page also. Another thing I want to share with you was or is that last Thursday I went dancing and I love to go dancing and I do it not frequently enough. And in particular, I'm going to date myself here, but I don't ever lie about my age, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> in particular, I really love dancing to 70s music. And there's a band at a local casino here that plays every Thursday night, and that's what they play is 70s music, and in particular, a lot of disco. And I know, don't judge me, but I love dancing to disco. And what it brought up for me or reminded me of is that dancing is play for me and that it's really important for all of us to have moments of play in our life pretty much every day and towards the end of the show during the light bulb moment I'm going to be sharing with you more about why play is important and how you can discover what play means for you what kinds of activities are play for you so stay tuned for that later in the show well Carol has been patiently waiting, so let me introduce her to you. Carol Marley Klein is the author of Streetwise Spirituality, 28 Days to Inner Fitness and Everyday Enlightenment, a book that tells readers how to cut down on frustration, anger, and stress by turning their spiritual creativity loose on everyday experiences. She facilitates workshops and offers life coaching on people's negative core beliefs. Let's welcome Carol Klein to the Laura Longley Show. Hi, Carol. Hi, Laura. Thank you so much. It's so good to be with you. Well, I'm happy to have you here, too, and I really love um, the focus of your book, which is really helping people to make these spiritual practices be a daily practice, because when we have something to do each day, as you outline it in the book, it helps us keep on track with that progress that we want to make. I know. Yes. Yes. It's very hard to make changes otherwise. Yeah, so I really appreciate that. And, you know, where I'd really love to start with talking about the book is I know that there's a component of it that really came out of your own personal journey. And I'd love for you to share a little bit about what that was, how it came about, and how you came to write the book. Oh, yes. When I was... 13, my mother and I started going to this metaphysical organization, and they had channeled materials twice a week. And I would go with her regularly. It was interesting, but I didn't really, you know, I was just as a kid, 13, you're not really thinking about important questions and life and the rest of that. You're just, you know, busy hanging out and doing whatever you do. So, but I, I was interested enough to keep collecting these transcripts of the lectures that were channeled. I put them in a box. And then at the age of 17, I turned into an instant teenager. And I didn't want anybody telling me how to live my life. Imagine I was, that. <laughs> I imagine. <laughs> so I continued putting the lectures in the box. I let my mother bring them to me, but I just, I felt kind of disconnected from it all. And then I traveled a lot. I lived in Japan for 11 years, took the box with me, and I went from California to Columbia where I got my master's. I took the box with me. I was just bouncing around. So finally, in like around 2005, 2006, I moved to Portland and saw this box all beat up, and I'd never opened it. And I thought, this thing is just, I'm going to get rid of it. So so at this point, how long have you had the box when it comes to 2005, 2006? Oh, just decades and decades and decades. I mean. (laughs) So you towed it around and never opened it? Never opened it. Never once. It got really messed up and smashed. And I just would always kind of, oh, well, yeah, let's take this too. (laughs) But I opened it and took out some of the transcripts and began to look through them. I thought I was just going to take it out the dumpster and realized that there were some very important points, practical points, not just, you know, rise above, but look at what happens to you and use it, learn from it, grow from it. So I began using those points, and sure enough, my life changed immensely. Wow. So that just inspired me to sit down and start writing the book that I wrote, and then I've been talking to people about it ever since, and that's the story. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the book really didn't come out of just that you had all these lectures. It came out of your own application 
yes, of those right. in your own life. It's do you, full do of you, life stories. Do you have a, a particular one that you want to share just to start us off? A particular story? And given we have one minute to break, a quick story. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my, you caught me flat-footed. Um, it would be really difficult because I'd have to kind of describe what started it, you well, know, what was behind it and then it where an, it goes. Is it an easier question to say what is one of your biggest learnings out of this? Ah, uh, my biggest learning is that patience, perseverance, and adaptability are absolutely core to a happy and fulfilled life. And that's and those what are the, the three topics that yes. you address in the book. Yes. So, yeah, I, w- when we come back, I want to talk a little bit about patience in particular because that's one of my <laughs> not, not <laughs> so strong suits that I that I frequently get kind of in my face that I get to work on. Oh, so, yes. Um, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Me too. So when we we'll come back from the break, we'll talk about that a little bit. Okay. I'm Laura Longley, and you're listening to The Laura Longley Show, where authentic change takes flight. You can find me on Facebook at The Laura Longley Show and at thelauralongleyshow.com. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, Carol will help me figure out my issues with patients. So stay <laughs> tuned, and we'll be right back. Call the Oprah of Radio by her listeners. Award-winning host Dr. Pat Basile is blowing the doors off of traditional talk radio. Get ready for an energizing delivery and powerful interviews with leaders in the field of human potential. Dr. Pat's fresh new perspective on living life full out has catapulted her show to the top of talk radio. Tune in and Dr. Pat will help you thrive instead of merely survive. Visit the drpatshow.com. That's T H E D R patshow.com for listening times in your area. Tune in each Wednesday at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com to Inspired Action Radio with Jennifer B. Mastering the art of dream building in the real world. This hit show will inspire you to start painting the canvas of your life and bring your unique spirit and your amazingly intelligent mind together to find an incredible, practical, real-world strategy to building a life with epic results. Tune in to Inspired Action Radio with Jennifer B. Laura Longley is on a mission to remove stuckness from your life for good and replace it with happiness. Tune in Mondays at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, and Tuesdays at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com for The Laura Longley Show, where authentic change takes flight. Say yes to that inspired you and goodbye to your stuckness as Laura and her guests deliver powerful ways to work through common problems in this fun and unique hit show. How would you like increased health and vitality? How would you like to avoid the onset of disease as well as slow the aging process? This is all possible through a simple, safe, and natural process. Every day we are either moving toward wellness or away from wellness. Hi, I'm Mary Jane Mack. I'd like to be your partner in achieving optimal health. Contact me now at MaryJaneMack.com or call 425-392-0659. Visit MaryJaneMack.com. Tune in to the Sandy Brewer Show, getting to the heart of what matters in your life. Thursdays at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com and experience the powerful healing voice of Dr. Sandy Brewer, one of Call and Talk Radio's most dynamic, compelling personalities. Get ready for inspiration and contagious humor and her been there, done that, no-nonsense advice to meet today's challenges. Listen and call in at 800-930-2819 for the Sandy Brewer Show. Tune in to the Michelle Bond Show. Awaken to a new reality. Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern. This call-in show with Vedic astrologer, expert, and holistic health practitioner, Michelle Bond, will give you insight to a wide range of topics. This hit show provides healthy, empowering knowledge and information and restores your health and well-being through learning the latest complementary and alternative medicine modalities. Visit themichellebondshow.com. Thank <laughs> you. 
We're back on the Laura Longley Show. My guest today is author and wellness coach Carol Klein, author of Streetwise Spirituality, 28 Days to Inner Fitness and Everyday Enlightenment. And before we talk more about your book, Carol, I'd like to ask you to give your contact information for listeners. So if they want to come and find the book or they want to come and find you, they'll know how to do that. All right. It's www.streetwisespirituality.org. Oh, that's very easy. So they can find both you and your book there. Indeed. Good. And there's also contact information in case they want to connect with me. Right, because I know you do wellness coaching. We're going to be giving away a session later in the show, which I forgot to mention at the top of the hour. So everybody remember that later in the show, we're going to give away a free (laughs) wellness session with Carol. Um, So be, be stay tuned to call it. Um, So before the break, we were talking about patience and um, my lack thereof in in many situations. And and I do have to say that, especially this past year, listen, people who listen to my show regularly, you know, hear me talk about my own growth this past year. And patience has really been one that's been really, I've really had to address in lots of different ways. And, and then after 55 years of not being very patient, I'm not really like just transforming immediately. Mm-hmm. So say, say a little bit, Carol, about number one, why patience matters. And number two, what are some ways that we can work on being more patient? Okay. Well, First of all, I don't think you're alone. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure I'm not. <laughs> Our culture does not embrace patience. You know, we hear every, every I just, I have no patience for this, or I have no right. time to spend on this. And it's, it's just a constant go, go, go kind of a society that we live in. And it, it just doesn't, it doesn't go that way. Right. But I too, starting out that way, found that life really didn't work very well for me if I didn't try to practice it. And so I would keep it in mind. And sometimes I'd do the old rubber band on the, the wrist thing. That was for my patients. And I'd pop it when I got impatient. Or I'd put, like, refrigerator magnets. I'd put something up saying patience. I put it around me to the point where it just kind of went with me like a, a puppy dog. Mm-hmm. And it would help. And also when it, something would come up, I would take a breath and say, oh, okay, this is a patience test. And it's, it's important because I see it as a soul quality. Whereas impatience, I talk also in the book about outer mind and soul mind, and outer mind being fairly close to the popular idea of ego, where it's, right, you know, right. pushing for its own thing, it's trying to protect us, but it's not doing it in a very effective way, and there's all the inner critic voice going on. So if you want, if inner peace is something that you're really interested in having, there's really no way around learning patience. That's why it's so important to bring that into your life and make it more and more a part of you. But it's not going to be instant, just like you notice. It, it right. takes a lot of time. You know, they talk about 21 days to learn a new habit. Well, patience is not one of those. It's much bigger and longer. <laughs> 21 <It's> years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's very, very worthwhile, but it doesn't come overnight. And we in this society want things to come overnight. We want yes. five tips for that. We want overnight 10 pounds off and all the rest of it and right. anything important just doesn't come about that way right and that's hard and I, well and I noticed that in the book because you have 28 days of practices and mm-hmm. 14 of those so half of them are focused on patience <laughs> yeah I knew that 21 days was the magic number but I thought nah if it's going to be patience you've got at least to have 14 days in there yeah so I extended yeah. a little bit it's so, so what there what are, some, what are some of the practices in the book that are related to patients? Well, some of the practices have to do with, like, learning to meditate. And I'll, yes. I've had people come, like, if I'll be at one of the Body, Mind, Spirit expos, and I've had people come by the table and say, oh, she's only about meditation. But <laughs> meditation is really very central because yes. that is the way that we connect with those deeper parts of ourselves and get past ego. So with meditation, you can request, I mean, meditation isn't just silence, it's all kinds of things, and you can request help with your patients. It's all, it's just built up around you. It's all, it's layered. I think that's really the best. I want to also kind of point out that meditation in itself requires patience. 
Mm-hmm. It does. Be- because you have to be able to s- sit still and be quiet. And even when your mind is not wanting to do that. And so just doing meditation at all, even without being focused on improving your patience or, um, you know, getting better at being patient, you're doing it just by meditating because it you requires are. patience. And one of the things that I use, like if I'm in a, in a meditation and I find my mind just, <laughs> you know, flitting off here and flitting off mm-hmm. there, I'll incorporate some deep belly breathing because that helps to focus me again. You, you're right there, right there in the moment. And the belly breathing, of course, helps us to release stress. And yes. the less stress you have, the more likely you are to get into a kind of a patient frame of mind. It's when we get all crazy. So, what am I going to do? That oh, everything well, goes yeah, it's, yeah, because I know that the times where I have difficulty in meditating, it's because I'm feeling some sense of urgency about something I should, and we're going to talk about shoulds <laughs> later on too, but something I should be doing instead of just sitting here. Yes. Yeah, We all have other things that we think we should be doing that are more important than meditating, whereas the truth of it is, it all begins with meditation. Things grow out of it like a flower pot. Yes. And, you know, we've been hearing this for years and years and years, Mm -hmm. and at least I have. And, um, you know, I think that it's really all been converging over the past several years to where this whole thing with meditation shows up in so many different avenues in life now as, you know, this is the starting place. And it really is about um, being in touch with ourselves, our higher self, whatever name we like to call that. Mm -hmm. Um, Because if we're not, then we really nothing we're doing really is coming from, I don't even know, I'm not even saying it very well, but it, you know, when we're in touch with our higher self, then everything that we do comes from that place of spirit. Yes. Yes. Whereas when we're not, then things may, may be in line with spirit, but that's not what's creating it for us. That's right. It's all about integrating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Yeah, exactly. Oh, we have a caller on the line who has a question, and um, I'd love to talk with her. So, Dee, you're on the air with Laura and Carol. Hello. Hi. Thanks for taking my call. You bet. So, you have a question for Carol? Uh, Yes, I do. Um, uh, I've been experiencing, like, you know, I start a lot of projects, and um, I feel like there's some kind of a block uh, that... I start things, but I don't, I can't seem to finish them. And I've got like multiple things that I've started. I get extremely excited uh, initially, but then later on, I don't know, midway, it's just, uh, it's not that I lose interest. I'm so interested, but I lose focus and motivation. If you can provide some insight on that. Well, I understand it completely because that's the way that I lived for years and had lots and lots of projects. I'd get so excited and then somehow the steam would just go out of it. And I think part of the problem is that we are the perseverance aspect of those three things I spoke about before, patience, perseverance, and adaptability. We're kind of programmed in this culture to always be pursuing the new, new thing, and we drop the old, old thing. And that's, for you, it's a problem with your your projects, but it can be a problem with relationships as well. Something goes wrong and boom, we're gone. We just think, you know, I'm not going to put up with that. And this could be a practice for you to pick one of those projects, choose the one that means the most to you, and work with your spiritual journal. Be plotting it out day by day, what you did on it, and go until the very, very end. Show yourself that you can do this, because you can, but you have to connect with that deeper part of yourself. And I would suggest meditating as a part of it. And it's it's possible. I can do it now, but I couldn't do it back when I didn't know anything. Okay. That, that's really great, okay. Carolyn. Do, does that resonate for you, Dee? Uh, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. I think that's what I need to do, just find one and just stick with it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, and then and celebrate I, at the end of it. That's right. That's a great well, Thanks so much. 
You're welcome. Well, thanks for calling in. And, and I will add that, you know, the problem that Dee was talking about, I've had that problem <clears throat> myself, especially recently. And I think for me, that part of it, part of it, I think is <laughs> a personality thing where I just get drawn to a lot of different things. But I also think that part of it for me is that I haven't, um, I, I've been in this place of transition and growth, and I'm just not ready yet to implement some of these things. And that's, for me, part of where the patience is really coming into it, mm -hmm. is not trying to jump the gun because I feel like I need to be doing something or I should be doing something, and really waiting until the right thing is coming for me. So that's just a different um, part of it for me that's been happening recently. Yeah, there are lots of things that we could do, but we don't have to do everything just because it comes on the table. Right. We have to make our choices. We need priorities because, you know, there's only one us. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. So on that note, we're going to take another quick break. I'm Laura Longley, and you're listening to The Laura Longley Show, where authentic change takes flight. You can find me on Facebook at The Laura Longley Show and on thelauralongleyshow.com. And when we come back, Carol is going to give away a free wellness session. So be sure and stay tuned for that. And we'll be right back. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Our hosts are setting a new standard for a fresh kind of talk radio, creating conversations that are transforming the world, one listener at a time. Transformation Talk Radio's mission is to broadcast a distinct blend of live talk radio interviews with a mix of uplifting and intelligent news, educational and practical information. Topics range from personal development to critical issues relevant to a rapidly changing world. Stay tuned. Transformation Talk Radio starts at the top of every hour. Transformation Talk Radio showcases a distinct blend of live talk radio interviews with a mix of uplifting and intelligent news, education, and practical information. Topics range from personal development to critical issues relevant to a rapidly changing world. Our hosts bring together some of the planet's most preeminent and visionary change makers, best selling authors, motivational speakers, leading edge scientists and futurists, environmentalists and educators, world renowned spiritual leaders, inventors, filmmakers, artists, mystics, and healers that are stimulating and supporting individual and collective growth. Get ready to create positive cultural shifts on Transformation Talk Radio. Join us in making a meaningful difference in the world. TransformationTalkRadio.com. That's TransformationTalkRadio.com. You're tuned in to Transformation Talk Radio. Think the Dr. Pat shows the cat's meow? Just listen to what some of her transformative guests have had to say. What's your personal message? What would you like to leave us with? I believe in yourself always. Remember that uh, you are a gift. You are a miracle. And the only way you can return any part of that gift is what you do with it. Live into yourself and be that miracle. I love it. Eldon Taylor, everyone. And, and thank you, Pat. I love joining you. You're a wonderful host. Thank you. And we're going to bring Eldon back because we, we just haven't even scratched the surface here. Thank you all for tuning us in, turning us on. Thank you for listening. And keep us tuned in right here on Transformation, Transformation Talk, Talk Radio. Radio. Transformation Talk Radio, a higher consciousness perspective. The hosts on Transformation Talk Radio offer a positive and new paradigm shift, a new vision for a collective future. They are empowering and helping all of us experience a powerful wave of personal shifts and cultural change as we break through to even greater levels of awareness. Take down our toll-free number, 1-800-930-2819, 
Call in, connect, make sure you tap into some of the world's most empowering psychics, healers, and more. Get an on-air reading with the best. Tune in, TransformationTalkRadio.com. Hey, everybody, we'll see you there. We're back on the Laura Longley Show. My guest today is author and coach Carol Klein, author of Streetwise Spirituality, 28 Days to Inner Fitness and Everyday Enlightenment. And right now we're going to give away a free coaching session with Carol. So if you would like this coaching session, gosh darn it, I forgot to write down the call-in number on this particular day. Brian, what's the call-in number for people who want the wellness session? one 800 930 one nine. Great. So first caller, and while people are calling, Carol, can you just say a little bit about what the sessions are like, how you work with people? Okay. With a wellness session, it's not like therapy. It's not like I'm trying to fix anybody. We find some issue that the, the caller, the, the person wants to discuss, and then I do my best to try to help the person see possibilities to to have this happen in their lives, what they need to do, what might be standing in the way, and what if it's really worth the effort or if there's something else they'd rather do. So it's all about them. Well, I love it when it's all about me, so I'm sure that everybody <laughs> loves it when it's all about them. And, and um, you do the session by phone? Yes. Great. So anybody can call from anywhere. Brian, can you give the call-in number one more time? Oh, certainly. 1-800-930-2819. Okay, first caller, free wellness coaching session with Carol. So call in now. And let's get back to talking a little bit about the book. And I know I said that I wanted to talk a little bit about shoulds. I know, Carol, you said that you would like to talk a little bit about the pause button. And so um, where, where would you like to go with it right now? I think maybe we can start with the pause button and then go into okay. the shoulds. Okay. I, I just wanted to mention that one of the best things that I've found that helps me when I'm triggered, when I have something come up and I automatically want to, to react in some way, is to press an internal pause button and just hold for a moment and try to figure out, okay, where does this come from? And if I want to react like getting snapping back at somebody or if I want to react by kind of hiding and shutting down, these are two very normal ways for us to react, as you know, you know, the fight and flight right. mechanism. Right. But there is a third way, and the third way is having other choices, creative choices. That's when we get in touch with that innermost self. So by putting on the pause button, then I don't automatically react. I don't, I don't say or do something that I'm going to regret later on. I just I weigh it. And I figure out what needs to be done. So I call it kind of a golden quarter second in there between what happens and how you respond. And the more you practice with this, the faster it becomes. But the the important thing is hit pause before reacting. And I, you know, I noticed your language with this because this is something that I have been conscious of as well. And, And really what you're wanting to do is... Instead of reacting, you want to respond. And there's yes. a difference because reacting is yeah. automatic. It's when we're on autopilot and whatever triggers us, just we just go. Whereas if you take your suggestion and do that pause button, then it gives you time to stop because then you're not on automatic pilot anymore. And you can respond instead of react. Yes, it's a big difference. And that's, that's how we evolve. You know, because if we're just doing the same thing over and over, then right. it feels, you know, year after year. It's like, it's like my early decades. I was doing much the same dance, and I got many of the same results because all I was doing right. was reacting. And yeah. it was very painful. Well, yeah, because it, then it becomes kind of like a, I was going to say a tape recording where it just, you just say the, or do the same thing over and over. But, it, but when it's in um, relationship with someone else, then they've got their own, right? So they react sure. to how you react, and, and you just yeah. get stuck in that. Yeah, and you've got this repetitive pattern going. And if you have a repetitive pattern where it feels like deja vu, you're doing the same thing over and over again, it means there's an opportunity to do something different, you know, right. be creative. Right, so we don't want it to be like Groundhog Day, the movie, right? Where No, no, no. Well, he <laughs> the same day over and over. <laughs> 
<laughs> and then you wanted to talk about the shoulds. Shoulds yes. are, I just, I love the shoulds. They just, I have learned so much from them. These negative core beliefs, like I should do everything perfectly or you know, I, I, I should get everyone to love me so that I'll feel protected and safe. And then, of course, there are the, the more egotistical shows like everything should be my way. And right. my coffee should always be in the supermarket when I want it. And they just come up all over the place. And they're constant upwellings of this desire from childhood to control our environment and to feel like we are in control mm-hmm. or to overcome a sense of possibly that we don't feel that we're worth very much. So if I don't feel very worthwhile, then I'm going to try to protect myself with perfectionism and not let anybody see any of my my downsides, my weaknesses, and then hope that I can just play that game throughout the rest of life. And of course, it doesn't work. Well, and you know, I kind of look at, because since we were talking about reacting versus responding, and I kind of look at shoulds as being reacting triggers also. Yes. That if I'm telling myself that it should be a certain way, or I should do a certain thing, that really is is like an automatic tape, right? Absolutely, yes. Yeah, because I'm not really weighing and evaluating what I want to do. Yeah, I think one of the big things about the difference between reactions and responses is with a reaction, you're going into this, it's kind of a hierarchical thing. I'm looking down on you or I'm looking up to you to save me. Whereas right. with a response, we're eye to eye, we're heart to heart, we're eyeball to eyeball, and we can share our authentic selves. Whereas we can never do that when we're just reacting on automatic. I think that's a really great distinction, and um, it makes it easy to to kind of see what the difference is, because we do want to be on an equal basis with everyone, both you know for ourselves and for them too. Yes, and the funny thing with perfectionism is we never get there because a perfectionist right. will set goals and say, "Well, when I get there." I'll be perfect. But if you get too close, if a perfectionist gets too close to that goal, they'll move it further out because if they can get to it, it's not perfect. (laughs) Right. Exactly. Because they really don't, because they really don't believe in themselves. And so they can't believe that they could be perfect anyway. Yeah. It's a constant path to disappointment and it's very, very painful. And some people live that way their whole lives. And it's just so sad. And for me, what I've found is that it's really important because I'm a recovering perfectionist myself. Me too. And I, I, that's why I call myself as well. <laughs> and at first I thought, well, I'll tell myself excellence is enough. But then I thought, no, that's too squishy. What I want to say is progress is enough. Let me just be satisfied with that and move towards something. I can see progress. That is something that is in front of me and right. feel comfortable with that. And again, as I said earlier to our caller, Deb, celebrate. You know, when you get something in terms of of what you can see is progress, celebrate. Don't just let it pass by and think, okay, now I can run off and do 10 other things. Right, right. Well, and, you know, I, I just want to throw in there, too, that I've really been in my um, psychotherapy practice really focused on shoulds a lot with clients. because, And I tell them it's a dirty word that they need to remove from the, their vocabulary because a lot of the people that I've worked with have – either been depressed or had anxiety. And from a cognitive perspective, when we're telling ourselves in our head shoulds, then it does create that, it it really creates that not good enough feeling. Yes, yes. Which does lead to depression and anxiety. Yes. And so we just want to remove that word from our vocabulary at all because it when we really explore it, most of the time, we can't even say why we should do anything. It's just this kind of nebulous belief we have about it that came from somewhere. But we go, okay, why do I even think that's true? I don't even stop to think if I think it's true or not. Well, I've given it a great deal of thought. And it it seems to me that it probably starts out when we're very little and yeah. we are like in our cribs and we're hungry and so we scream <laughs> or we smile at people and that's kind of the, the beginning there when we're screaming it's it's the fight thing you know give me what I want and when we're smiling it's oh please do something for me and we are still using those manipulative tools as we get a little bit older trying to control our world but when we become adults 
our, the lessons change. And if we're still using those old shoulds as adults, they really don't work. And all they do is make us miserable. Right. It's like the pleaser saying, oh, I've got to find somebody to take care of me. No, what you need to do is look at what you need for emotions and your spirit, your mind, and your body as well. Take care of those things yourself. And then what other people bring to you, that's gravy. But right. the job is, you know, to learn to look within and take care of who we are with self-compassion. So would you say that that is the core of it? I would say that is a huge part of it. I would never say that anything is all of it. But right. If you've got right. that, you've got a lot going for you. Well, because I relate that to my own kind of epiphany or aha that happened for me about a year and a half ago where I really felt my wholeness and my own perfection as a soul. And it's a, you know, concept that many of us have had in our heads for a long time that we are created perfect. We are already perfect, but we don't really believe it. Yes. <laughs> Even though we, we understand the concept and we believe in the concept, but we don't really believe it. And I actually had a moment where I actually felt that. <clears throat> and although I don't actually feel it most of the time anymore, I can call upon that memory, which to me is very similar to what you were just talking about. Yes. So, so I'm sorry to cut it short here. We're running up on break time. And I do want to give, Carol, I want to give you an opportunity to give your contact information one more time before we go to break. Okay. It's streetwisespirituality.org. And I would love to hear from any of you. Thank you so much, Carol. It's really been a great conversation. Time has just whizzed by, and I wish we had more time. But thanks so much for coming on and talking. Thank you, Laura. We're going to take a quick break, and when we return, I'll share this week's light bulb moment. I'm Laura Longley, and you're listening to The Laura Longley Show, where authentic change takes flight. You can find me on Facebook at The Laura Longley Show and at thelauralongleyshow.com. Stay tuned, and we'll be right back. Tune into Intuit University, compassionate guidance, connecting you to your inner wisdom with internationally renowned psychic and medium, Sherry Dillard, each Thursday at 12 Pacific, 3 Eastern. Get ready for an hour of practical spirituality, fun, and a magic carpet ride into the spirit realm. This hit show is a combination of call-in readings and intuitive mentoring as Sherry supports, inspires, and empowers you to create your highest good in relationships, career, finances, life purpose, spirituality, and more. For more information, visit SherryDillard.com. On the cutting edge of the new mainstream, Christine Upchurch is passionate about bringing together science, psychology, and spirituality in a way that can be applied to our everyday lives for true transformation. The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey, engages some of the most outstanding visionaries on the planet in lively dialogue to inspire you to become that bright light you're meant to be. Join Christine every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time on KKNW, a.m. 1150, and Transformation Time. Talk radio. Tune in to The Truth is Funny with Colette Steffen each Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This hit show will have you thinking outside the box and riding the wave of infinite potential. Join Colette on the Higher Self Network, inspiring listeners to shine their brilliance and ensure success while roaring with laughter as they recognize the humor of the giant cosmic joke. Visit The Truth is Funny. Com. Laura Longley is on a mission to remove stuckness from your life for good and replace it with happiness. Tune in Mondays at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, and Tuesdays at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com for The Laura Longley Show, where authentic change takes flight. Say yes to that inspired you and goodbye to your stuckness as Laura and her guests deliver powerful ways to work through common problems in this fun and unique hit show. Want to know what the best kept secret in Access Consciousness is? It's the Access Gold Club. Demanding more change and the latest and greatest, but can't always get to all the classes you desire? Let Gary and Dane come to you. 
Join the Gold Club, and each month you'll receive a 60-minute live call, a weekly email on the month's theme containing the latest clearings in written form, and an MP3 loop. Twice a month, receive a brand new video with Gary and Dane. How does it get any better than this? In addition to receiving a CD format of the monthly call mailed to you, you'll also enjoy a surprise bonus gift. Be in on the secret. Join today at www.isnowthetime.com slash special dash tips. Welcome back to the Laura Longley Show with me, Laura Longley. Today we've been talking with Carol Klein about her book, Streetwise Spirituality, 28 Days to Inner Fitness and Everyday Enlightenment. And if you would like to get a copy of Carol's book and work through the 28 days, I think it's really a fabulous way to kind of kickstart getting into your conscious mindset. And you can find Carol's book at Streetwise Spirituality. Oh, now I forget if she said .org or .com. Well, you can try them both <laughs> anyway. Um, and you can find more ways to get help with moving forward in life at my Facebook page, The Laura Longley Show. On Twitter, The Laura Longley Show, S-H-O Show, since Twitter only allows you a certain number of characters. So it's L-A-U-R-A-L-O-N-G-L-E-Y-S-H-O is my Twitter handle. And always at the lauralongleyshow.com. We've had a lot of really insightful and helpful guests on the show, and you can listen to archives at the lauralongleyshow.com. And if you're interested in getting written transcripts of the Laura Longley Show, you can sign up for my weekly newsletter, and you can find that at the lauralongleyshow.com in the right sidebar right at the top is the sign up place and every Friday you'll receive a email that tells you who's coming up audio archives as well as written transcripts of previous shows now at the first part of the hour I was talking a little bit about how I went dancing to disco music on Thursday night last week and that led me to thinking about playing And so I want to share with you why play matters. Why should we play? Well, part of it is, as Carol was talking about, in our culture, we get really focused on achieving and we get really impatient. And play is really about being in the present moment, which leads us to be more patient. It's when we are most ourselves when we're playing. It's when our soul comes out <clears throat> and it allows us to express ourselves, express who we are just for the joy of it, just for being us. And it reduces stress to do this. And play has been something that's always been difficult for me. From very early in my life, there was always a goal to be achieved. There was always something to be done, something to do. And judgments made by others about my performance, but really more judgments made by me, has always, well, I won't say has always, has frequently kept me from really just letting go and playing in whatever way resonates for me. Play has no goal beyond itself. We're not trying to achieve something with play other than being in the moment, having fun, expressing our true selves, and just being joyful. Play is so natural when we're children, and it's a big part of how we learned when we were young, was just by doing stuff that seemed interesting or um, fun, and that's how we learned. And play is about being in the moment, our creativity, and our own expression. Play can be anything that takes you out of yourself where you quit judging your performance and you really just disappear into the activity, whatever it is that is speaking to you in that way. So if you could use more play in your life, in our light bulb moment, I want to talk about how you discover what play is for you because for each of us, it's different. And how do you do it? 
because many of us are like me, where I really grew up not really playing very much with everything that I did, having to have some sort of an end goal in mind and not just playing for the fun of it. So how do you discover what play is for you? Here are three questions that you can ask yourself. What is an activity that always leaves me feeling more energized after I've done it? What really sparks you where you just at the end of it, when you're coming down from it, you really are coming down from it because you feel so energized. What's something that does that for you? What is an activity where I find myself smiling for no reason, just for the joy of it? Something that I enjoy so much, I have a big smile on my face for no reason at all. Where, when are the times that you find yourself doing that? That's play for you. And third, what's an activity that I feel drawn to for no good reason? In other words, there's no purpose in the activity beyond enjoyment, beyond just doing it. So for me, dancing does all of these things for me. I feel more energized. I smile a lot. And there's no end result to it other than enjoying myself. And I would also say for me, this radio show is play. I have felt called to it for I don't know what reason, but I feel energized by it. I smile a lot. And there's no end result other than just enjoying it. And when you're doing your play, do not judge or criticize how well you're doing. Let your entire being be immersed in whatever it is you're doing, body, mind, and spirit in the activity. And go with whatever emerges for you as you're in that activity. Just let it flow. Just go with it. So that's how you can discover what play is for you and actually do play. Just a few announcements. I want to remind you about... My radio newsletter, the radio show newsletter, comes out weekly. You can sign up for it at thelauralongleyshow.com, right sidebar at the top of the page. My new Facebook page is on Facebook, The Laura Longley Show. Come and join the discussion. I really want to hear from you. I want to hear your ideas for guests. I want to hear what you think about the shows that we've done, what you want to talk about on the shows coming up. And you can also email me with guest suggestions at laura at the com. So I really would love to hear from you and get engaged with bringing you what it is that you want to get out of this show. I want to thank my guest today, Carol Klein, for sharing her wonderful information from her book, Streetwise Spirituality. And I want to thank all of you for tuning into The Laura Longley Show with me, Laura Longley. I had a wonderful time. Please join me every Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Central, and 1 p.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com and on the first and fifth Monday of each month at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific on KKNW in Seattle or TransformationTalkRadio.com. Next Tuesday on The Laura Longley Show, I'll be talking with astrologer Rhea Wolf about her book, The Light That Changes, The Moon in Astrology, Stories, and Time. And as always, it promises to be a very enlightening and interesting time. Have a great day, and we'll see you back here next week. You've been listening to The Laura Longley Show, where authentic change takes flight. Tune in each Tuesday on TransformationTalkRadio.com at 1 p.m. Pacific Time, 4 p.m. Eastern Time. And now on KKNW, the first and fifth Monday each month at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, and everywhere on Transformation Talk.